Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you a day in the life of a Spanish teacher. So I work at a boarding school and part of my salary is getting this apartment and I also get food. So that is great, but obviously I don't get paid as much. What I wanna do with this video is talk about kind of like what I've seen in, this, in the classroom in terms of language learning and um, some things that students could do in order to improve their language skills. I'm also going to show you what we're doing. Uh, I'm currently teaching Spanish two and three. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Before I go ahead with the video, I do want to tell you that I think that the best way to learn Spanish or any language is by integrating it into your life in the most organic way possible. That is why I am very happy that LingoPie is sponsoring this video. LingoPi is currently available in Spanish, Japanese, Korean, Russian, Portuguese, Italian, German, and French. My favorite thing about LingoPi is that you get to watch non-American shows. None of the shows in LingoPi are dubbed. All of the shows in LingoPi are actually from Spain or from Colombia or from Mexico or originally from France or from Brazil which allows you to learn the language in a more authentic manner because you're actually seeing how native speakers utilize the language. And you also get to learn a little bit about the culture by watching shows that are actually made in the country of the target language. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to go to the Spanish section and I'm going to choose the series that I'm watching. It's called The Mysteries of Lauda. As you can see on the screen, what you get from LingoPi is not only the TV show, you also get double subtitles. So as you can see from the screen, I have Spanish and English subtitles. When I hover over any word, it gives me the definition of the word. And when I click it, it saves it into my word bank. When I finish the episode, LingoPi is going to prompt me to review all the flashcards, meaning all the words that I clicked throughout the episode and I can review them or play games with them or just look at my vocabulary list and see how many words I learned from watching that particular episode. There are also a host of other interesting features. You can get private lessons and you can also participate in forums and talk to other people about the languages that you're learning. It also has a kids section, so if you want to teach your kid to learn a language, this is a great platform to do so. Overall, guys, I think you should check LingoPi out. You can click the link in the description for a special discount. And if you don't feel comfortable paying for LingoPi just yet, LingoPi offers a seven day free trial. With that said, guys, let's go back into the video. First, I do want to show you my apartment. It is pretty small. So there's my bed. Um, it's kind of half made because I just woke up and then there is a door, so there's another empty room on that side, about the same size as this. There's my um, desk and I have a fridge as well. So it's not, it's obviously not super huge, but it's not a big change from the dorm room I was living in at college, in college. So I'm totally fine with it. Obviously, if I had a family, I would get a bigger apartment, but because I don't, I get a smaller apartment. So this is my apartment and I also get food, which I think is nice, but obviously, as I said, I get that deducted from my own pay. So yeah, but let's go to the classroom and I will show you what we're doing today. Hey guys, so this is basically what the classroom looks like. Obviously I cannot show you what the children look like, but today we watched a movie about ex-presidential candidate Antanas Mokus. He's very, very well known in Colombia. And uh, here are some of the other presentations that I've done for them. I've shown you, I've shown them what the food looks like, um, some things about school. So I've shown them that. I've shown them things about like Colombian identity and stuff like that. But yeah, basically that's everything that we've done. The kids were having a really, really hard time today because they were misbehaving a little bit and it's a little bit hard to manage misbehavior i think that that is like the one thing that affects them the most in terms of their grade so for example this class that i just taught has an average of like 79 percent and my other classes have an average of 90 percent and the reason i think this class of a, has a lower average is because they misbehave so much and they miss some so much time in class and they don't learn what they have to learn so if i were a parent i would make sure that my kid isn't 
like the best behaved class i would fight for them to be in the best behaved class because behavior is truly like one thing that kills the learning process they can't learn if they're being distracted by their peers but yeah basically that is it and now i'm gonna go buy food um for lunch and yeah i'll see you later guys hey guys so i am back at my apartment and i took a shower i ate i feel a lot more refreshed um especially I, I think i was a little bit upset this morning because the kids were misbehaving and they usually don't misbehave a lot but initially at the beginning of the year they did have some problems with misbehavior then we worked on that they've gotten a lot better but today it was one of those days with, where they were just like not having it and misbehavior makes me kind of like a little upset because i feel like they're wasting an incredible opportunity and I just want to convey to them how good they have it and that education is like the most important thing in the world. I truly believe that and when they don't appreciate it or acknowledge it, it makes me kind of upset, kind of mad about it, but okay, so let's turn the page. Um, so it's six o'clock, kids should be arriving to their house, getting their stuff out to do their work. And I want to talk a little bit about my expectations for homework. So initially I did have the kids do about an hour of work and that was too much. So my mentor, I have another teacher who is my mentor because I'm a first year teacher, told me that that was too much and that kids are only expected to do about 45 minutes of homework. I personally disagree with that. I think that kids should be working a little bit more and I know it's challenging and I know it's hard and I know that kids have like 10,000 compromises in the United States but I feel like their academics should supersede everything else. And what I've noticed in this high school is that sports are actually the thing that goes beyond and above everything. Sports is like the priority, it's not the academics. So that is fine, it's a cultural difference. Um, in Colombia, academics are a lot more important. So I'm just going on, or like I'm just going into the classroom with that perspective and obviously that doesn't match with the cultural expectations. Also, I feel that Spanish is taken a little bit more lightly than other subjects. So that is why Spanish teachers or language teachers are expected to give a lighter load of homework, which I find disappointing, but it is what it is and it is the culture and it is how Americans see the education process. Uh, a big part of education, according to, I think, the American system is sports and they have the reasons for it. And I think that some of those reasons are fine because you do learn a lot of things with sports. But I personally believe that academics are a lot more important. Again, that is just my personal opinion. And of course, I have to um, kind of like follow the rules of the school because that's what they hired me to do. So I tend to give them like super long homeworks. Um, in the review, but I've tried to shorten them so that they're a little bit more manageable. So I'm going to show you what I usually give them for homework. So usually I have them do grammar exercises or cultural stuff. So I had them read this um, PowerPoint about the different regions in Colombia. Sometimes we have debates and I've talked to them about kind of like the way that Latino culture sees um, gender, for example, and how it is a lot more marked and binary in Colombia than it is in the United States. And I am not telling them that it's wrong the way that they do it in Colombia or right the way that they do it in the United States. I just try to uh, instigate in their mind that different people from different places think differently. So for example, with the gender spectrum, a lot of people in Colombia don't actually acknowledge that there is a gender spectrum. And I'm not saying that that is like, that I agree with that or that I don't agree with that because I don't think that my responsibility or like my place in this classroom is to tell them what to think um, or to like even give them my opinion. But I do think it is important to hone in that different people and different cultures have different values and different ideas and that they see the world differently. So we sometimes do get to have debates often about race and gender and values, just like how people in Colombia see family, how people in Colombia see gender roles, what are 
what are like the expectations for a man and for a woman which i think every single society has um their different values and it's okay to talk about them however in terms of the debate i do think that the kids censor themselves a lot i do acknowledge that that is just like something that happens in america i've been living here for 10 years and i'm not I'm completely privy to it. Like I understand what's going on. I understand what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. But I do think that there's a lot of censorship going on in the classroom. And the reason why I say it is because I've told the kids that it's important for them to disagree with each other and to disagree with each other respectfully. So I tell them that the classroom is a safe space to disagree. And I think that they're very hesitant to disagree, not with each other, but with like mainstream opinion. They're very hesitant to veer away from what is commonly accepted because they feel fear of repercussions and they've said it before they said like hey can i like remove myself from this conversation not because i don't want to talk but because i feel scared that someone might be filming me or i'm, I'm scared that someone might be recording me and that that might have repercussions for me in the future it is like super sad to hear that and it's super sad to like have to stop a discussion not because the kids are not interested in the topic but because kids are fearful that someone might take their comment and um kind of like twist it in a malicious way and paint them in a bad light and that that might have consequences for them in other realms of their life so i definitely feel very upset about that and i guess it is important to me in the sense that i am going to be a mom um and you know i hope that my children are able to have honest discussions about everything because when i was a kid in colombia i had honest discussions about everything um now it's not about like being um biased it's not about being racist it's not about being xenophobic it's not about being anything like that at all but uh I think that it is fine for kids to, to disagree and have different opinions and for those opinions to be valid and okay and if those opinions do have kind of like a taint of um, incoherence in the sense that they think things that are like racist or, or xenophobic or whatever, um, to explain to them in a logical manner why those ideas are perhaps not the best, but um, I don't think that the mission of a school should be to like censor every conversation and to just like paint an idea of what should be said and have every single kid agree with that in a performative way um, because i think that that is what is going on in the classroom and again i think that's really sad because i don't think that kids are allowed to think i think that kids are told to not really express their views and to be quite honest i don't think it's working um because we all know that kids are gonna do whatever they want and people are gonna think whatever they want even if they don't verbalize it so i think that having honest conversations about these things is a lot more important than just telling everyone to shut up because otherwise there would be repercussions anyway that is just like my very long rant about culture and how it has manifested itself in the classroom um i'm very proud of the kids when it comes to those conversations because they do show that they want to express themselves they want to express their opinion they think it's important um to to have these conversations and they've told me like i really appreciate this class because i feel like i think feel like i am being asked legitimate questions and where i'm being listened to but i still feel fearful that some of my opinions might not align with other people and i don't want to hurt anyone i don't want to be insensitive towards anyone so i don't know like how to express myself but i think that they do appreciate the class in the sense that uh in the sense that they feel that it's a place where they can maybe express their opinion in a sincere way obviously i'm not the school and i'm not other people i'm not the world so i can't protect them from um like attacks outside of the classroom for what they say in the classroom but at least i try to have everyone kind of just like talk in the most honest way possible but anyway i'm getting off topic so so yeah guys that was like a very long rant and i just want to thank you for accompanying me in this very long day i i do appreciate the kids a lot i think that they're very good kids i do think they um can challenge themselves a little bit more in terms of everything 
Um, I do acknowledge that in terms of like the debates that we have, it is very scary because again, they can't express their opinion. Um, I mean, two girls told me like, oh, we couldn't even celebrate a goal in our soccer team because our coach said that if we celebrated our goal, we would make the other team feel bad. So we got punished for celebrating the goal. So truly the censorship is insane. It is truly like crazy making, um, in my opinion, whatever. Like, again, I can't really speak for everyone, but I can speak for myself that is absolutely insane. Um, anyway, I just have a lot of thoughts about kind of like education. It's something that really interests me. I'm really interested in child development. I'm really interested in kind of like what is the right way to um, bring up a child. I obviously don't have all the answers, but um, these are just kind of like some observations that I've made in the classroom. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. So I will see you next time. Bye, guys.